Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Spurs against Manchester United, FA Cup semi final. Could Spurs finally win a piece of silverware this season? Could they end their FA Cup semi final drought? And what about Manchester United? Lost the league officially last season and looking to save their season. Would Mourinho provide another cup triumph to Old Trafford? Don't worry, here at the interviews, we've got you covered. So, on this edition of the interviews, I'm going to briefly break down Spurs against Manchester United. So Spurs, Manchester United, FA Cup semi-final, one side looking to win silverware this season. Who would do it? How would they do it? Well, the main theme in this game was how Manchester United approached the game. We've seen them do this against Chelsea. They didn't do it against City. They've done it against Liverpool this season. Obviously different ways, but they've shown up in the bigger games and proven that Jose Mourinho isn't finished. Yes, he's not winning the league, but he is still one of, if not the best big game manager in the sport. We look at the board, we got Manchester United in the red, we got Spurs in the blue. No real surprises in the Spurs' lineup. Kane up front, Ali just in behind him, Kate, Son and Erickson on the flanks. In midfield, you have Dembele and you have Dyer. Manchester United rejigged their system a bit, slightly tinker it. You didn't know who was going to start. Mourinho kind of gave some players an audition midweek. However, he went 4 3 3. Lukaku up front, Lingard and Sanchez on the flanks. And then in midfield, he had Matic, he had Herrera, he had Pogba. Why did Mourinho line up like this? Well, when you look at it and you look, you just go back in history with Mourinho, you think about the big games, you think about def defensively disciplined wide players. Alexis Sanchez is renowned for his work rate. Jesse Lingard is great at tracking back. He does a job. And they both can offer you direct pace on the counterattack with Lukaku. In midfield, this is where things change. The last time Spurs played Manchester United, they were getting overrun. Matic was getting overrun. It's happened before at Chelsea, now at Manchester United. Eriksen, Son, Ali all popping up into the space. Paul Pogba isn't the best partnership to help combat with that. So he brought in Herrera. That midfield for most of the game kind of looked like this. It's kind of something that we saw with Scott McTominay and Matic at a certain point of this season, but here with Herrera coming back in, you kind of get it all from him. He's not the player that you expect to win your league title, but in these big games, he does the dirty work. He can do a job, man mark, break into tackles. He has the passing, the passing range to control the tempo or ensure that they retain possession and then he could score goals as we saw on the day and when you look at that that gave Pogba a bit more freedom to push forward but United were kind of out of it in the first 10 to 15 minutes we knew what they were trying to do they were sitting a bit deeper you kind of had them like this a bit wider and Spurs were kind of bogged in a bit yes they had these players forward but it was kind of like that and they were pushing them forward you would have Davies against Young, you'd have Trippier against Valencia. That wasn't a big issue because they could hold their own in 1v1 situations. But in this midfield jigsaw right here, United were sitting deep. They were forced to sit deep and you were just wondering what how they would be able to stop this Spurs flow. You would see Kane kind of dropping off, but United did well in having a man on him, whether it be Jones, whether it be Smalling. They followed him, they tracked him. There was one play in the game early on where you saw Smalling track Kane all the way beyond half, and it just goes to show how his day was gonna go. And he struggled throughout. He hasn't been the same since he returned from injury, and he struggled here. His best moments were when he did drop deeper away from that pressure to kind of play as a facilitator, rather than a poacher and Mourinho would love that, love that more than anything but when you look at how United conceded because it looks like everything was fine here it's the fact that they stepped up to press and they got caught you had players breaking in here you had players breaking in there and what happened was that Ericsson as smart as he is he sees Valencia pushing forward to press onto Trippier or Young push onto Trippier and then you see right here is that Sanchez is being pressed. Ericsson is here, he charges into that space. Pogba notices it pretty late and he follows him but again it's too late and you could question whether Pogba could have ran a bit harder but look he was already beaten by Ericsson at that point. Sanchez clips the ball over to him, he picks up the ball, you have Ali breaking and doing what he does best. It's a well-timed ball, well-weighed. Most players 
would kind of find a way to mess that up. He put it on a platter for Ali. He put it into the net. One nothing. United suffer from just the defense, a systematic error in terms of the way they pressed. That was a big issue. But as that was when Spurs were there for the kill and you expect them to make a difference, but they were unable to. Their best moments came when they played, switched the ball into Sun 1v1 with Valencia. You saw him run at him. There was one opportunity where Kane pulled off the defender, clipped the ball in, but Kane couldn't control it. You saw another opportunity where he went 1v1 with Valencia, and this time it was Ali breaking in at the near post, but Jones made a vile intervention because that was going to be another tap in. And then there was another opportunity where they switched it back to him again. They were getting Sun in great positions to run at Valencia and he was doing a good job but this time he just pushed a bit wide and his touch was a bit heavy and he can only earn a corner kick but that was Spurs in a nutshell they had really great chances there they probably should have converted and put United down and out hit them hard early like they did in the league game at Wembley they were unable to do that and United were able to settle back into the game and kind of just form that shield and when you look at the way United scored again it's just a systematic an individual error because Dembele who loses the ball here and to who no else no one else other than Paul Pogba dispossesses him there and then he has Sanchez who is breaking off to the other flank he's able to clip the ball over instantly a well weighed ball again top quality in this game he's able to nod it past Michel Vorm nothing he could do about it there and again you look at the two goals to that really sum, that summed up the half and it's just individual mistakes or team mistakes it wasn't teams really carving each other open when you look at what United were doing they played the script here and they played the part because like I said they dropped deeper they had the two there and what happened was that Kane couldn't get the ball in because he was so tightly marked Ali couldn't really come in between the lines because again you'd have one press him if you went there and then you'd have one screen and he passes into the to Kane, vice versa, screen passes into Kane. And they had issues there trying to get the ball forward. They had issues trying to get the ball into Kane. There were times where Ali was stuck high and who was able to get the ball into him. What didn't help was that sometimes Sun was drifting in because then you could have one stay tight, uh, one, another player push on there and the wingbacks would likely take Davies against, against the uh, Valencia and that didn't really happen often. And Trippier was fine there but, and when you have the wide players dropping off, they didn't allow Spurs to get any overlaps in the wide areas. So here, Spurs trying to play it through the middle, trying to get Ali involved. No one was there. And we've seen this happen with Spurs. And who is the key man to really put them on their feet? It's Christian Eriksen. And that's what happened. He was dropping a bit deeper, getting onto the ball. There was one chance he played into Sun, who volleyed it wide. He got behind the defense, but he was offside. There was another opportunity where Davies made a darting run in, but he couldn't control the ball. It bounced to Ericsson who clipped it right over there that you have Sun breaking in but he couldn't guide his effort on goal so you see when you look at it it was Ericsson breaking in behind I mean break dropping a bit deeper forced to drop deeper to get on the ball he was flashing shots wide you look at the second half he got on the ball flash a shot inches wide of the net you have Dyer stepping in he fired a shot off the post at the start of the at the end of the first half and when you look at Spurs they weren't worried about Dembele and Dyer getting on the ball they know that they're not the greatest passers so they didn't really worry about pressing them you saw Dembele get forward sometimes Pogba would step to him but he, they weren't worried about that and Dyer as well that wasn't a big issue for them in the second half Ericsson did find more spaces between the lines as the game got a bit stretched but he failed to connect his final passes with his teammates whether it be Sun, Kane or Ali he wasn't able to get the job done and United just sat there and they they coped they they broke down play in the midfield and they got their opportunity and when they did it was just a great template to what they were doing well it's Herrera winning the ball in midfield and Herrera starts his run from there a long ball is punted into Lukaku who nods the ball over Sanchez it's Alexis against Trippier he sees Lukaku going in, plays the ball to Lukaku. Lingard is breaking in, but it's Herrera who continued his run. And with the defender coming to Lingard, he lets it go to Herrera who side foots his shot past Vorm, a true box-to-box -box goal. And it just summed up everything that he did well here. Breaking up play, finishing a goal, United were in front 2-1. And then when you look at the chances that they had after that, 
It's a lot of Lukaku long balls. They sat deeper, one possession, frustrated Spurs. You got a Lukaku long ball into the channel here. He breaks in, he fires a shot into the side netting. He had another opportunity where the Spurs line was a bit higher. And it was Pogba who breaks in and slides the ball into him and he breaks free on goal But then he fires a tame effort on goal And then you look at Pogba who did play in a higher role He had two chances that did force good saves out of Vorm and he picked up the ball in these areas when Spurs dropped a bit deeper There was one where he picked up here in the first half behind Ericsson behind Dembele No one picks him up turns bench shot off the defender forces Vorm into a save the second half It was the same thing on this flank Picks it up, poked from Valencia, turns, forces Worm to push the ball away for a corner kick. But United sat deeper. They they com they compressed space in the midfield and they ensured that Spurs couldn't get anything going. Spurs didn't really have any great offensive changes to change the game. Lucas Mora came on that and that changed everything because then Davies came off or Tongan went to left back. We saw Dyer move into center back. We saw Erickson drop a bit deeper. They brought in Lamella later, but it was too late. They didn't force De Gea to make any real saves in the second half and barely any in the first. Mora was driving. He was looking to be a bit more forward-minded, but then you had Sun who was tucking in narrow and they still had the same issues arise. And it wasn't a good afternoon for Spurs. Again, another semi-final loss, whereas United and Mourinho go to another cup final and Mourinho proves that he is still very good at what he does. But let me know what you guys think. Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And that was your daily dose of the interviews. Thank you.